So I had an assignment for a fluid sim class, and the assignment was basically make the coolest thing that you can make with fluid. And being a visual effects person, I wanted to find a way to put the fluid in the real world, and find a way to make something that's incorporating real world elements and animated elements. Now, if you know me, you know I've done a lot of things with live action footage and fluid sims before. Most recently, when I produced Adhesive Wombat's Storm Crusher music video last August. The difference with this project was that I couldn't use Blender's in-program fluid sim. I had to use a program called RealFlow. So I made this. It's just me walking around my backyard and the whole thing's flooded with water and I have to trudge through it. And since it's real footage and it's really me walking around the backyard, it feels a little bit more real than say just a full animation. And while it's not exactly perfect, there are some cool compositing tricks and I wanted to share them. The two programs I used were Blender and After Effects. So first off, I shot the footage on a DJI Mavic Mini. It's a really small drone and it has a few modes where it's autonomous. It can actually follow a point that you select. So on the controller, I just selected myself and let it go. I set it to complete one full rotation. And then I walked around the backyard. So as it was trying to complete a rotation, I was walking around the backyard. So it took a while to get around. This is not going to be a tutorial video. I'm just going to be focusing on a few different aspects of the compositing in this project. And here we are in the Blender viewport. I won't be talking about how I did the water that was done in real flow but I will be talking about how I did the compositing. So the first step was to take that drone footage from before and motion track it. So you want a ton of points, track each one of those points, and then create a camera solve. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a camera in 3D space that matches the real world camera, so that you can start adding 3D elements into the scene. You can see right here how our 3D camera matches the real world camera. So first I needed a few different video elements. The first thing I needed was just a shot of me in the frame without anything else. All I did is use the grass background as a giant green screen basically. So I used the key light effect in After Effects to key me out of the background. And then I used masking to take out other elements. And this is what that looks like without anything else. You can see there are some errors like the shadow by my feet, but that doesn't really matter for our purposes. And this right here is a pass of just the background with me removed. This pre-comp right here is just me from before. Then I took the original footage and I set the tracking mask to alpha inverted so it's going to take the alpha of the thing above it which is just me and invert that alpha and then use that as the mat so then you see there's just a human shaped hole in the footage then i duplicated the footage and put a copy of it behind that and just keyframed it so that there's always grass behind me so i just shifted that footage by a certain amount so that you see grass and then i use after effects content aware fill to basically use that background as a reference and fill in the hole and that's where you get realistic looking grass that's not the exact grass that was behind me but it looks close enough so now that we have those two passes this is where the cool stuff happens i had previously created a collision object i needed an object to collide with the water in the fluid simulation so i created this object so on the left side you can see the same view but from above and on the right side you can see that original footage with the trackers since the animation didn't have to be perfect all i did is i looked at this object from above all i had to do was determine which trackers my foot was closest to and i had the names enabled on the trackers so i could roughly estimate my own movement so throughout the scene i just just kept animating that collision object and mirroring my own motions by looking at the track points. Here you can see how the collision object lines up with where I'm going in real life. So this plane right here is actually me. I hid the collision object and I just had a plane with the video from before where I'm keyed out from the background just applied to that plane. I'm using the window texture coordinate connected to the video and the video's alpha is being used to mix between a diffuse texture and a transparent texture. So that window texture coordinate, all that's doing is saying from whatever angle you're looking at that plane, project the image from that angle. Since we're using the camera solved camera, it's the original camera just represented in 3D space. And I used the child of constraint on the plane to connect it to the collider. I also could have used the track to constraint on this plane so that it would always be facing the camera, but I opted to have a little bit more control over that and just keyframe the rotation so it always faces the camera. The best part of doing it this way is that since it's a physical plane, half of my body is still below the surface of the water just like it would have been in real life. So it's sort of halfway between compositing and actually doing it fully in 3D. Now since the water allows for refraction, meaning light can pass through it because it's water, we needed something below the water that represented the ground as it would be in real life. And for that I'm doing the exact same thing, using the window texture coordinate, connecting it to this time the video of just the ground where I use the content to wear filter in After Effects and projecting it right onto the ground again. And this is an animation showing what it looks like if you were to see the drone camera reprojecting that footage onto the ground from a third person view. Now this animation was created a slightly different way, but it's basically the same concept. Here's the view, but in a viewport render preview, that ground shows through the water nicely. Now, once you break out of the camera view, of course the whole illusion is broken. Another cool thing about using the plane is that you actually get some shadows. The alpha of the plane, which in this case is my silhouette, is casting a shadow onto the water. 
You get that by making sure that you set the blend modes to either alpha hashed or alpha clipped and the shadow mode to the same. This will make sure that the shadows respect the alpha of the actual material. And there were a lot of other components of this project including the shading of the water, optimizations for rendering, and also the final color grade which also happened in After Effects. Let me know if you enjoyed this style of video or if you would prefer a more traditional tutorial style. I plan on taking some videos that I've made and kind of breaking them down like this some more. So if you enjoy this type of video, go ahead and subscribe.